Good evening, everybody. Hope you're doing well today. Hope you've had a great Tuesday. want to extend a special congratulations to my niece, Madeline, who graduated from high school and they had their drive-by celebration today and uh, very happy for her. She's been doing dual enrollment at NECO and uh, is actually, I think, uh, uh, only a year away from having her associates. So, that's pretty amazing. But uh, anyhow, as you can see by our topic, uh, is disbanding the police a good idea? Now, in life, there are things that happen, um, issues in society in which we as Christians need to develop an opinion upon. And my goal is to think about things logically and biblically. And so I've used this topic that has been in the news lately and actually there's been two different discussions. One's defunding police and the other one's disbanding police. They're actually two different things based on the research I've done. And by all means, I'm not gonna say that I'm an expert on this. I'm not. Um, I've done a little bit of research so that I could give you this information tonight. Really what I'm looking at is giving you principles. Because I'm a man that lives by principles, my principles come from the Word of God. So I derive my opinions in life from the principles of Scripture, which help me discern what should I think about a particular issue. And so we have this issue here uh, of disbanding the, the police that's been brought up. And so is disbanding the police a good idea? Uh, in short, the answer is, in most cases, no, it's not. Um, I believe most of our police are doing a great job. I'm privileged to know several officers, and I think each one of them are great guys that are doing a great job. Now, does that mean that every police officer is that way? No, of course not. Uh, in my line of profession as a pastor, um, there are pastors out there who are not good pastors, who have done some really horrible things. Does that mean that all pastors are bad people? No. Um, have I had people accuse me of things that certain pastors that I don't know anything about have done? Yes, I have. Uh, I've had people not shake my hand because I'm a pastor. I've had people accuse me of being a pedophile because I'm a pastor. Um, and uh, I've had people say all sorts of things uh, to me because I'm a pastor because that's, they know some pastor who did that. I'm not that way. I can't help the way they feel that way. And in fact, I know that if they got to know me, their opinion of me probably would change. Uh, but nonetheless, that stuff exists out there. And, uh, but I don't judge uh, uh, police officers by the conduct of a few outliers. But with that said, there are times when corruption, um, corruption's a real thing in our society and corruption sometimes permeates through a, a particular police department. And there have been instances in where that corruption uh, alters the way an individual uh, police department operates uh, to such a point that, that it's, it's not functioning the way it was intended. It's not operating the way, way it did at its inception. And there have been uh, those rare cases where uh, those departments have been disbanded. We'll talk about that more in a minute, but I want to get to the biblical principle that helps us to understand how do we derive our opinions on these sort of things in life? And I want to look at Matthew chapter 7, verse 17 uh, through 20. I'll read it to you, which says this, every, Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a, a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and is cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Now, I understand that this is talking about a per person's soul, but there's a principle here that we can take from this. When we think of uh, department heads, uh, police department heads, where the leadership structure uh, is, is, uh, um, has a philosophy, that's a picture of the, the tree, okay? Uh, the individual officer brings forth a fruit that comes from leadership. A, a, any type of leadership has a philosophy that's going to operate, operate by. It will give out its ideas to people, and that will it'll come forth. So in these rare occasions where uh, um, a uh, department has been disbanded, what that means is it's done away with. D Disband now we gotta understand what that means. Disbanding a police department does not mean there's no police. It means you replace the department is what it means. Because you recognize that a department is so corrupt that it's beyond repair. The the best example of this, and you might have seen it in the news if you've watched this or uh, done any research, was in Camden, New Jersey. 
um, which was one of the worst places in America several years ago. And they disbanded their police department. Uh, after the police department was disbanded, actually 88 people were released from prison because it was found that evidence was planted against people. Um, that, that's corruption. And this was widespread amongst that department. And uh, there was a lot of animosity between the community and the police. And, 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 and it, it, was, it was, you know, it was bad. It was, it was, it was not good. And they did away with their police department and started a new one. And, and so they disbanded the news. They disbanded their police. Yes, they did. But they didn't have no police. They had a new department. And, and it was really neat policies that they did. The police officers would go door to door in their community where they would patrol and introduce themselves, get to know the people in that neighborhood, ask them, what are your concerns about this neighborhood? What's something that we can do to help you? And you know what they did? They tried to build strong community bonds. These same officers would uh, uh, show up in certain areas and with a grill in tow and grill uh, burgers and hot dogs for the community. Uh, they would have a movie night uh, on, in certain places, you know, police officer in uniform showing a movie and they tried to build a community up. And what's amazing is that in seven years, they've had a 42% reduction in crime. It's not perfect. There's still problems. But just by changing the approach of the police and getting rid of corruption, uh, they had a 42% drop in crime. Now, I'm sure that there's a lot of factors in that, but the point we're making here is this, is that you had a department, the, the tree, so to speak, that was corrupt. It was evil and it produced evil. Now, that's certainly not indicative of all police officers or all police departments. That is a great minority. In fact, that's really one of the only examples we see of that. Um, and and so when when something is corrupted it means that it, it it doesn't mean that no good things come from it it's just at its core it's wicked and it permeates to every aspect of everything that it does so for all the good that it does it has some this poison attached to it and and the only way to deal with it properly is to scrap it this is a principle all right and so whether it's a police department a bible college a church or a business. If its structure, if its leadership, if its philosophy is corrupted and has a, a wicked thing connected with it that's intertwined in what it is, it can still do a lot of good things, but there's just going to be that, that poison pill with it that's going to ruin it. And the only way you could, you, you got to scrap the thing and start over. And I should, I believe that should only be done in the most extreme of cases and, uh, and, and that you, know, you ought to remedy it if possible. Now, if you're saying disbanding the police with no replacement for them and relying upon the goodness of people, if that's your philosophy of disbanding the police, that is a very bad idea. And there's a reason for that. And again, we come back to the biblical model of interpretation, a biblical living by biblical principle. And this is where uh, there is two major philosophies that exist. There's the world's philosophy and then there's a biblical philosophy. There's a the world, the, the world's view of the world, and then there's the biblical view of the world. And so the biblical model says that man has a sin nature. Man is not inherently good. That doesn't mean that man can't do good things. He can do good things. But man is predisposed to do wrong. This is why you do not have to teach your children to fight. You do not have to teach your children to lie. You do not have to teach your children to be bad. They naturally are. What you must do as parents and as teachers and as grandparents and as Sunday school teachers is what are you trying to do? You're trying to teach, teach kids how to be what? Good. Why? Because it doesn't happen naturally. A child left to themselves is a disaster. So they need to be taught good, not bad. Why? They have a sin nature. The Bible teaches that. And so the idea here is that if you... Um, if a political leader's plan is to disband the police and have no replacement for it and rely upon the goodness of man, then they are inviting anarchy into their community. Now, some would disagree with my assessment, they would, and they would have an assessment um, uh, that says that man is good. 
and that you just need to change in the environment. And if you change a, a person's environment or upbringing, that they will be inherently good. Again, I understand there are people that have that viewpoint. That, however, is not a biblical model. The biblical model tells us in Romans 3.23 that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, in that the way you deal with sin is you, you deal, you curb sin by dealing with sinful people. You hold people accountable for their actions. I believe people have the right to choose. I am not some robot that is incapable of making choice because of what happened in my past. There's plenty of things that happened in my past. If I wanted to be a, a drunk idiot for the rest of my life, I could have plenty of excuses for why that's okay because of the things I've been through. But I choose to be different, and every person has within them the ability to choose what they do. We are not programmed to act a certain way because certain events or certain upbringings happen to us. We have the right to choose. And if you punish sin, the Bible says in Romans 13, verse 3, for rulers, that's the government, are not terror to good works, but to evil. It means they are deterrent. Government is a deterrent to evil works. This is God's plan. Because God understands that you, if you put man, why does God understand this? Why does he do this? Because if you put man in a perfect environment, you know what man's going to do? He's still going to rebel. Because we know this, because in the Millennial Kingdom, as recorded in Revelation chapter number 20, people will live for a thousand years without sickness, without poverty, with, with world peace. And you know what they'll do at the end of the thousand years? They'll rebel. Why? Because that's what man naturally will do. He will rebel any chance he gets. And that's found in Revelation chapter 20, verses uh, 7 through 9. But I do not believe that in general this is what people are speaking of when they talk about disbanding the police. Again, this is only done in extreme cases, uh, and, his, and, and at least that's historically what it's been done in our country. And uh, uh, I think that you know in Minneapolis, this is the most current thing. I think that's what they're thinking. I hope it's what they're thinking. I don't know exactly what they're thinking. Uh, that, that, unfortunately, the thing is this, is that they don't exactly know what they're thinking because they were questioned and they said, well, we don't really have the answer for that yet. Unfortunately, with politicians, they're more concerned about the next election than they are doing the right thing. And that's a byproduct of our system that we have and having lifelong um, political leaders as opposed to people actually working jobs and knowing what the working man is like. You have lifelong politicians that don't understand people and they don't understand uh, uh, the realities. And that's not to say every politician is like that. That's not that at all. I believe there are some really good politicians that have worked hard, that have built their businesses, and they get it, they understand it. But there are also lifelong politicians that have never worked a real job in a day in their life, and they don't understand the working man. They don't understand, uh, and you could say the same thing about pastors, by the way, but I did work in the secular world, and I understand uh, some of the challenges there. But anyhow, uh, the disbanding of a police department and creating a new one is only done in when there is corruption so permeated through it that there's really no there's no way of fixing it. It is that corrupt tree, that evil tree that produces evil fruit. It's got to be cut down. Again, this is not the majority of police departments, nor the majority of police officers. It's a fraction of a fraction. But it is what's getting all the media attention. And I want to say I'm thankful for the police officers that I personally know. Uh, I want to thank, uh, I, you know, um, uh, I had uh, one call me just the other day about something uh, that was a, a, a concern to them for, for our congregation. And, and, and they called me just to kind of give me some heads up. I, I'm pre appreciative of that. I'm thankful for the police department in Haverhill. I'm thankful for the state police here in Massachusetts. Uh, all the law enforcements that I know do a, do a great job. And, and I hope nobody would ever judge, uh, uh, you know, a police officer that you don't know based upon the actions of somebody else. See, I believe in judging people based on their own individual conduct. That's why I don't judge a person by the color of their skin. I don't judge them by their nationality. I don't judge them by their vocation. I don't judge them by anything other than what they individually do. That is a way that I have chosen to live. 
I choose not to make generalizations on people, but to let people stand for their own selves. I don't even judge them based on what family they come from, because I understand within a family, you can have a wide range of behavior. And I would trust that everybody would judge police based on the individual merits of that department and the individual merits of that individual. Just as I would not like to be judged by, as a pastor by other pastors who have sinned, and uh, I, don't, I don't want to be judged as I am sometimes, but I don't want to be, and nor should I be judged by the sin of, a, of another pastor. Uh, neither should an officer be judged by the sin of another officer. Understand that there are uh, uh, thousands upon thousands, 10,000 upon 10,000s of police officers in our nation, and you know 99% uh, plus are good. And it is that percentage of a percent that do wrong that, that the media focuses in on. And yes, has there been a precinct here or there that, that corruption permeated through it? You betcha. Absolutely. Why? People are sinful. That's why. And did it work in Camden? It looks like it's working. All right. But there again, they changed their philosophy and they changed the principles they operate by. And that's had a positive impact upon their community, and they should be commended for that. And again, what we're doing here today, and you might disagree with me and some of the things I've said, and that's right, I respect everybody's opinion uh, to have their own opinion. What I'm trying to do is get people to be, think biblically in how they derive what they con uh, to the conclusions they have. Now, I'll probably on Friday, we're going to have a Wednesday and Thursday night prayer meeting because we just got too many people signed up, which is awesome. I just can't fit them in the building at the you know, 40% number. So uh, we're going to go to a Thursday night service as well. If anybody would like to come to that, uh, you are welcome to. Right now, we only have about 16 people in the Thursday night uh, service. So, um, but uh, uh, I hope that uh, you're able to, to, to come or tune in or whatever. But uh, um, the Wednesday, it's a little bit more filled. But anyhow, um, on Friday night, I'll probably talk about the defunding, all right, which is a little bit different than disbanding. Um, and we'll talk about that and, and what that means. But uh, anyhow, Lord bless you. Appreciate you tuning in tonight. Hope the uh, Bible study helps you principally to understand uh, how to make decisions in life. Lord bless you. Take care. Bye now.